Good evening, Arbitrary. It always was a good evening. She always had said that it was a good evening. Before she left us. Every evening was good. Always. No matter the events. She would put a smile on that would crack open the souls of even the sternest of us. Good evening, she would utter. Good evening. Whatever happened to her? Issa no longer enjoyed her tone. Issa, with flawless judgment, decided that it was not a good evening. It was a mediocre evening. It was a mild evening. It was a passable evening. It was not a good evening. Issa cast her out of the radio station. Bless her soul. Bless her corporeal form. Bless all things that she owns to be blessed. We don't go out very much. We know not the atrocities that lay in waiting for us. It will not be a good evening again for a very long time. Not for her, anyways. Poor, poor... Name redacted. Did that startle you? I apologize. Ah yes. Where are my manners? All deserters are to remain unnamed. All those who are unworthy of our cause remain unnamed. Those who are no longer with us remain unnamed. Name redacted. Shall forever remain unnamed. Now she is a snack. A meal for whatever lies outside these walls. This brings us to our story for the day. Quite the interesting one this time around. Name redacted. Has discovered a new species. There is a brand new world of life at our fingertips. It is difficult to describe in terms of appearance. Reportedly, it is in a constant, almost gaseous state of shape-shifting. It moves. It turns. It warps, always. But there is one constant. Its mouth. It has a massive, round, gaping maw filled with teeth. It exists within a deep, black fog. It is the fog. It is the air. It calls... Name redacted. It calls her, beckons her. It wants her mortal form. That which has been blessed. A message from Public Safety. We advise you to avoid blessing certain items with certain runes. If it has begun to rain and you wish to maintain it or fight it off with runes, do not. Please. Do not. Please. This new species, labeled as the Nebu Gasa, seems to be drawn to all things blessed or enchanted. For this reason are rejected former intern is now doomed. I blessed her. I blessed her corporeal form. I blessed all things that she owned to be blessed. I have turned our former friend into food. Bait. Now she is cursed. What a shame. Let us all softly mourn. Name redacted. Together. Our collection of sentimentality is running smoothly. Should you see a warping, gaseous figure in the sky, ignore it. Pretend it doesn't exist. Say nothing to anyone. If you even think about its existence, that will only make it stronger. Defeat the evil by refusing to acknowledge it. Only think about happy things. In the open jaws of death, we only think happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Your heart might be pounding. You can feel yourself trembling. You know that it's almost over for you. But happy thoughts remain. Happy thoughts. Happy thoughts. Instead of the dreaded Nebugasa looming over your heads in search for spiritual sustenance, Pretend it's only a rain cloud. 
Pretend that it's only a familiar gray blanket, warming the cold blue sky. They look about the same anyways. It should be easy for you to pretend. Ignore the teeth. It only looks like rain. The rain. The rain. Which brings us to our weather. Unfortunately, the weather is indistinguishable from the Nebugasa. You can expect the thunderstorms to be monstrous. That was a pun. Did you laugh? I hope you did. Happy thoughts, remember. Happy thoughts. If you're outside, I encourage you to hurry inside. Please, for your own safety, hurry inside. It may be hunting you down if you have any runes on your person to protect you from the rain. It could be staring at you from above. The Nebugasa might be coming for you right now, and you might not know it. Gas doesn't make too much sound when out and loose like this. But don't be afraid. I'm here with you. Happy thoughts. Calm down. Breathe. Don't breathe too deeply. You might inhale the Nebugasa. Don't think about that too much either. You might make it stronger by thinking about it. Instead, listen to more of my funny jokes. Why did the 24-year-old go to the bar? Because he was lonely and wanted friends. What did the eggs say to the other eggs in the fridge? Help me. What did the window cleaner think about the man cleaning the windows? He looks thirsty. One more joke for good measure. Here's a classic, you'll know this one. Why did the chicken cross the road? He didn't cross the road. The chicken alternatively was drafted into war. He made many friends at the training camp. They grew together. They were shaped from boys to men. Together. They had watched each other mature and blossom into warriors. Now the chicken was ready for battle. The first wave was devastating. The very first wave. At that point, the chicken regretted ever having drafted into war for the French. The chicken had lost his friends in the war. He fought for his life, but to what end? Their side still lost. His effort was meaningless and his contributions did nothing to change the outcomes. When the war was over, the chicken was a different person. He didn't know how to be the chicken he was before. That seemed like an entirely different chicken than the chicken he was now. The chicken thought about the war every day. He couldn't stop living in it. Even after the war had already come and passed. It had traumatized the chicken. His wife couldn't handle the pain that his mind was in. His wife was suffering and the relationship quickly became toxic. The chicken's pain isolated him from everything and everyone he could have ever loved. The chicken had nothing left to live for. The chicken did not cross the road at all. The chicken sat on the road, waiting for death. The chicken sat on the road, waiting for death. The chicken sat on the road, waiting for death. For death. That was a funny joke, wasn't it? But don't worry. You aren't at the chicken. You have friends, and they love you. They all love you. They love you so much. You are not the chicken. You will never be the chicken. Back to the weather. The colors of the skies, wind, and rain seem to be terrified of the Nebugasa. They are not wise. Some clouds, particularly gray ones, have begun to warp around it. They are spiraling, imploding, changing as we speak. If you've ever witnessed a tornado forming, gripping tightly onto the ground for support as it howls in pain from above, then you've witnessed the colors being consumed by the Nebugasa. Violet is safe. Turquoise is not. Turquoise is in grave danger. 
Gravest gravestones may caress the graveyards because the situation seems just that grave. Blessed be Durkois. Blessed be the cousin of Autumn and the friend of the now deceased predictor. Oh, my mistake. We're not supposed to bless him, are we? That only still attracts the Nebogasa. What a shame. Oh well. We knew Turquoise well. I'm sure he missed his friend anyways. Now they can be close to each other again. I'm sure the predictor caught faint glimpses of that before his life came to a swift and abrupt end. Pitiful. Beautiful. Miserable. Poetic. As the Nebugasa passes, we should probably shut down our broadcasting signals for now, as to avoid attracting any unwanted attention. We know not who next the hungry, gaseous atrocity should target. We should hope that it wouldn't be us. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Eli Lacovius Leslie, and you have been listening to The Arbitrary. Good evening. Good evening. Yes. She always did say it was a good evening.